G'day guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a melting effect in Blender 2.8 using shape keys. Now this is a much um, quicker way and a much um, more efficient way um, as far as your, um, your graphics card or your processor goes to make a melting effect. Now I'm going to be showing you how to do this but we're not going to be going into any sort of um, like materials or shading but I'm going to show you how to actually do the effect and I'm going to also show you how to keyframe it if you want to turn it into an animation. So it's not going to be a long tutorial, it's quite simple even if you're a beginner. Um, so let's get right into it. With a completely new scene opened up in Blender we are going to delete the default items in the scene. So we're going to press A to select everything and then we're going to hit X and delete. Now you can use any object you want, um, but for demonstration purposes I'm going to go Shift A and I'm going to go to Mesh and I'm going to get a Suzanne monkey head. Now I'm going to go to my side orthographic view and I'm just going to move it up like so and I'm going to turn it a little bit just so I get a nice pose and then from my front orthographic view I'm going to go Shift A I'm going to add a camera I'm going to go to the side, just hit G to move my camera, move it to about here, just like that, and then I'm going to hit 0 to go into my camera view, and I might hit G and the middle mouse wheel button just to zoom back a bit, like so, and just get something that you like, so I'm going to just go with that, and then I'll grab the Suzanne monkey head and hit double R and just rotate it till I get a pose that I like. So I'm going to go with something like that. With my Suzanne monkey head still selected, I'm going to go to my um, my modifiers tab, click on it, go to add modifier, and we're going to add a subdivision surface. Now you can see here by default in the viewport, it is a subdivision level of 1, so there's 2 and so on, but we're going to just go with 1 and we're going to hit apply. And the reason we're doing that is because we want some geometry to work with when we go into edit mode. You can see here we have more vertices to work with. Now before we go any further, what we want to do is go to our object data tab here. And you're going to see something called shape keys. Okay, So make sure shape keys is open and you have your object selected. You can tell by seeing the orange outline. With your object selected, that you wish to do the effect to and in our shape, um, shape keys tab, we're going to go hit the little plus and it's going to create a basis and we want to hit it one more time and this is going to be key one and you can add as many keys as you want for different effects but we're just going to stick with key one so with key one selected and our object here we're going to tab into edit mode or we can just go to edit mode here whichever way you, whichever way you prefer it's easier for you and we're going to go and deselect all of our vertices now what we want to do, going back to our camera mode here, we want to kind of make a melting effect, especially here towards the bottom. We want to kind of see it sagging down and drooping. So what we're going to do is enable our proportional editing, and this is just a quick easy way of doing it. So enable it, you'll see it turns blue there. And at the moment, by default, it's set to smooth, and we don't want that, we want random. Because we're making a dripping kind of effect, or a melting, I should say. So go select random, and then select any one of these vertices down here and then G and Z and that's going to move that vertice down. Now as you're moving it along the Z axis what you can do is you can scroll the middle mouse wheel to get more of the selection to get the selection to grow and to get more of the vertices to follow the selected vertice. Now you can do this as much as you want but I'm going to go with something like that pull it down to about here I'm happy with that and I'm going to let go. And what I have now is this sort of sagging effect. So let's tab out of edit mode and at the moment you can see our effect is gone but don't worry it's just because you have to actually with key one still selected under our shape keys we want to go to our value setting here and we want to drag that all the way up to one. And there you can see the effect is now at full 100%. If you make that for example 0.5 it's only half of that and if you take it down to zero it's back to the basis here, which is just our original mesh if you go into edit mode. So these two are kind of differentiating. So it's going to move the vertices from this location where they are on basis to the key one when we 
go full value one like that okay so that's pretty much what all the shape key is doing so if you pull all the way to one it is moving the vertices through the 3d space to where we edited them in our key one now to make this look cooler what we can do is back to our uh, um, modifiers here we can go to add modifier and once again we're going to add a subdivision surface and we can go and in the viewport make that two if we want and also then just go to object and we're going to hit smooth shading awesome now go back to our camera view and what we can do actually you can just go to you don't have to be in the camera view just go shift a and we're going to quickly add a mesh plane here and just size it up go into edit mode just select these two vertices at the back and then go to the side of the graphic and just go E to extrude Move them out like so and we're just creating a little simple backdrop control B just to um, make this bevel here like that and then we're going to tab out and I'm going to go control 2 or you can just go to add modifier and add a subdivision surface and set it to 2 whichever way you prefer and then we're going to go to object and we're going to go smooth shading and now we have a backdrop let's go into our edit mode it's a little bit small so I'm just going to go SX to size it on the X vertices and there we have our monkey head with the backdrop so what we're going to do to make this just a little bit more realistic is we're going to go and go shift a mesh and we're going to add a cube and we're going to size the cube on the X vertice, like so, and just bring it up a little bit, like that, and then go to our modifiers tab, add a subdivision surface, and in both render and viewport, we're going to make it free, and we're going to go to object, we're going to make it smooth shading, and we're just going to bring it down into the ground a little bit, like so. Okay, and then we're going to go add modifier, and we're going to add a displace. Then we're going to go to our texture tab, we're going to click on new, and under type we're going to make it clouds, and then we're going to go back to our modifiers tab, and under the strength we're just going to bring it down to something like so. And then on top of that we can add another subdivision surface. So all that's going to do is kind of make this dripping effect on the bottom, to make it look like there's actually something um, on the bottom. So what we can do, do now is grab our camera, and then kind of just tilt it down a little bit like so. Go back into our camera view, move it up. And I'm just going to get a nice pose, something like this. And now we have our scene. We have our, our monkey head here. And we can go to our um, object data settings. And we can make the melting effect anything we want. We can make it a little bit or a lot. And I'm going to quickly also show you how we can animate this. So if you wanted to, for example, animate this, all you'd have to do is go to for example, we can see here we have 250 frames by default. So we're going to go to frame 10. So click, drag the little slider thing to frame 10. And with it on frame 10 here, under our key 1, we're going to make sure the value is at 0. And hovering over this tab, we can hit 1. And that's going to insert a keyframe. And then we can take this little tab, drag it to 240. And then drag the value here down to, oh, drag the value here all the way up to 1 or whatever value you want to. So I'm going to just do one. And then I'm going to hit I again. That's going to insert a keyframe. So if I drag this all the way to the beginning here and I hit play, we are going to see the melting effect take place. And that's a really cool way to do an animation without having to do any um, simulations or anything, which can be quite ren um, processor intensive. So I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Like I said, I'm not going to go into texturing or adding materials or lighting. It's just kind of to show you just a little cheat trick. And if you wanted to, you could even take this and animate it shrinking as the um, shrinking or growing as your um, animation is happening here. So for example, if I go to frame 10, I can I can grab this guy here make it really small like that and go I and make it a lock scale and then I can go all the way up to 240 like so and I can scale it up and I can hit I and lo lock the um, scale there so if I go like this 
we can also see the puddle there growing at the same time. So if I play the animation, that is what we'll get. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.